This call is now being recorded. Okay, so uh, in the second session on I. A. Richardson's uh, practical criticism, uh, in the first we have seen what is new criticism and how it, it tries to do verbal study uh, of the poem and trying to see that the meaning of the language of poetry is within the text, uh, within the text. So let us try to see that how uh, that word can be deciphered uh, from uh, the poetry itself, uh, rather than looking for the meaning in the title of the poem. Uh, in the authorial intention, which becomes intentional fallacy, or uh, trying to read into historical context or any other kind of external sources, uh, that is new criticism. And I. Richards is one of the champion uh, of uh, that way of uh, reading literature. Uh, so what else? Uh, before we enter into figurative language, uh, let me share a screen uh, with you and. The blog, I hope you have kept the blog open and the blog li link in case uh, if you want it again, I can put it in the chat here. The blog from where we are referring the things. So in case if you want to keep it open. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Richards, when we see introductory part, uh, he is the pioneer in the domain of new criticism. His other path, path breaking works are Meaning of Meaning, published in 1923. Uh, Principles of Literary Criticism, 1924, Practical Criticism, yeah, where there are very interesting chapters. Uh, 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 and these other chapters are also very interesting. That is four kinds of meaning, two uses of language, then on simile, metaphor, and symbol also. Uh, before we enter into figurative language, uh, briefly we want to see what he is uh, trying to say. Uh, or what, what points uh, 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 is he making uh, in four kinds of meaning, two uses of language, and on simile, metaphor, and symbol. For example, four kinds of meaning. Uh, what does he mean by four kinds of uh, uh, meaning? Uh, let me share yet another screen. OK, uh, so here we can see. Uh, uh, his uh, a summary of his write-up on four kinds of meaning. Uh, and what are these four kinds, he says? Uh, sense, feeling, tone, and intention. These are the four kinds of meaning that are found when we read the language of poetry. Okay? I repeat again, sense, feeling, tone, and intention. And uh, he says that sense and feeling are interconnected with each other and tone and intention are interconnected. So after four, you can make two groups. Sense and feeling are interconnected, and tone and intention are interconnected with each other. Sense, what is it? Sense is what is said or the items referred by a writer. Uh, any metaphorical items, similes, whatever uh, uh, things are referred by the writer, that is the sense uh, is what is uh, that. Uh, feeling. Uh, feeling is refers to emotions, emotional attitudes, will, uh, desire, pleasure, displeasure, and the rest. When we say something, we have a feeling about it, an attitude towards it, or some special direction, uh, bias, or accentuation of interest towards it. Some personal flavor or coloring of feeling also. Uh, word express these feelings these nuances of interest. Now, for example, we see that sense and uh, sense and feeling are connected with each other. Sense means uh, the items, the words, the metaphors which are referred by the writer. And feeling is that uh, whatever the sense will convey, the feeling will be connected with it. That is our attitude towards it, uh, a kind of a special direction that we want to give to a, a particular thing, a bias or accentuation of interest towards it, or some personal flavor or coloring of feeling, eh? this all becomes part of uh, a feeling eh? that is interconnected with the sense uh, there. Now, for example, if uh, if I am using a word uh, uh, to tell that uh, you you are ignorant, eh? you are ignorant, or I say the word you are innocent. Now, I use two words, uh, the sense, eh? that is the items which are referred here is innocence, and ignorant now but my feeling with that that is maybe that person that is the invisible listener even in a poem also there is always an invisible speaker and invisible listener uh, there is always uh, those things are there 
the same way if i am referring to this uh depending upon what feeling i have i will perhaps select the word or that word will mean also in a similar uh, way uh by giving the similar words like innocent and ignorant simultaneously together i also have somewhere in my mind an attitude or a bias towards this words that they are similar words uh, the meaning or sense of uh, sense of both these words are similar but it will depend upon my feeling uh, uh, with the person to whom i am telling that i will select either igno innocent or ignorant uh, so if i uh, if uh, i know the person and if i have told that person several times that uh, you are making mistake time and again uh, many a time you are told and yet you are making a mistake so then i will say that you are ignorant uh, you are ignorant uh, but if that person is making a mistake first time only uh, or uh, maybe uh uh say for example a person comes and tells you that uh, he or she is being cheated by somebody first time the person comes you say that well because you are innocent you consider everybody as innocent and so this mistake happen and so you are cheated now next time be careful second time the person comes the same third time fourth time also if the person comes that i am cheated then we will say that now you are ignorant <laughs> now you are not innocent now you are ignorant because our attitude now has changed first time we have a different feeling now repeatedly when it happens our feelings are changing eh, towards the person so now you you use the word not innocent but ignorant but in this entire exercise we see that the word innocent and ignorant have a similar kind of tenor a similar kind of uh, a kind of connotative sense is interwoven in both uh, the things also now if i want i am sympathetic towards the listener i will say you are innocent but if i want to be harsh with the with the listener i will say you are ignorant is yes, two words eh? now the choice of that word the sense of that word depend upon the feeling that i i used to convey eh, with that uh, also uh, so that is uh, uh, th th this sense uh, sense and feeling yeah? then tone and intention tone is the writer's attitude to his readers or audience eh? tone is writer's attitude the language the use of language is determined by the writer's recognition of his relation to this to his reader an intention is the writer's aim which may be conscious or unconscious it refers to the effect that he tries to produce this purpose modifies the expression yeah? writer's aim intention it controls the emphasis uh, 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 shapes the arrangement and draws attention to something of uh, important also for example uh, if you see uh, modernist writing we have seen in the setting of the modernist literature that it is esoteric esoteric so overall tone of the literature is esoteric and esoteric means we know that you are are trying to make it deliberately difficult which is not understood by everybody you want to make it deliberately little bit difficult so obviously your tone is is of that kind that the readers readers if they want to understand they will have to work hard and they have to Uh, raise their level to understand that is the tone of uh, the poet when he is writing the poetry in modernist literature when it comes to romantics like wordsworth wordsworth wants to be understood by everybody eh? so he will try to make it as simple as possible his tone is to see that i am i'm singing the songs of the uh, peasants eh? uh, farm laborers so i will speak in their language their emotions are best conveyed in the simplicity of their language so i want to be heard so his tone is that yeah? and with that uh, uh, the intention that what they want to do intention of wordsworth is to uh, be understood by the peasants the intention of the modernist is that that will we don't want to be understood by uh, uh, the layman because if they will understand they will start hating us and they will not accept our truths uh, or bitter truths so that is a different uh, intention so that is how uh, we can see that uh, the poem has four kinds of meaning and sense feeling tone intention can be found in variety of ways in that poetry there any question here in your mind about four kinds of meaning which richards is speaking about any question in your mind here okay then if you move to the next part then another is two two uses of language two uses of a uh, language and in two uses of language let me share a window again yeah uh, according to i richards language can be used in two ways that is to say the scientific use 
and the emotive views eh? that is called scientific use and the emotive uh, uh, use uh, it is only in recent years that serious attention is given to the language as a science in the scientific use of language we are usually matter of fact all the activities covered by this use require this undistorted references and absence of fiction yeah. uh, we may use a statement true or false in a scientific use of language but it may also be used to create emotions and attitudes this is emotive use of language we use words scientifically or for emotional attitudes when words are used to evoke attitudes without resources to references like musical phrases references are condition for developing attitudes and hence the attitudes are more important without caring for the true or false references now uh, to give an example uh, of this if you want to see uh, the example here then we can say that uh, when i say that uh, this pen is of a uh, red color uh, red color and there is a yellow uh, uh, cover uh, here uh, to cover the pen this is red color pen now red means red only uh, that is scientific language uh, that is red is red red can never mean any other thing in scientific use of language uh. it has to be red only i i can't say that if i pick up uh, uh, this pen and i said that this is a red color pen if i say this then well there is some problem i can't say that this is a red color this is a a blue color pen and i have to say blue means blue only but in in poetry when i say that my 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 love is like a red red rose when i say my love is like a red red rose then the sense of the redness changes in the poetry there is emotive use two times when i use a word that this is a red red pen it becomes useless in scientific language it becomes useless people will say that why don't you remove one red but if i say poetry my my love is like a red red rose then nobody will say why people will say that this is emotive use and you are adding more emotion to your feeling you are adding more emotion by repeating the word so in poet poetic language we have Uh, 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 the language where it is not taken as red as a color only, but there is always a, a kind of a significance of that language uh, in something, and that is why we call it emotive uh, uh, use of language, where the language is used to arouse some kind of emotions, some kind of emotions. Emotions can be of love, emotions can be of hatred, emotions can be of jealousy, uh, emotions can be of anger, any kind of emotions, but it is always there to evoke. Uh, the the emotion where a scientific use of language means matter of fact you say it you mean it uh, no possibility of reading any other thing so when scientists use the language they use it that this is so it is uh, it can never be any other other thing also now when you see this you realize uh, the difference that when people say that our, our myths are scientific then there is this problem uh, we are not perhaps understanding the language of myth also so for example if somebody says that uh, if you see the myth of ganesh uh, myth of it and says that uh, in those days there was plastic surgery or there was something like organ transplant now I, when i use the word plastic surgery or organ transplant these are modern day scientific use of language is modern day scientific use of language now in the myth if i say that there was organ transplant so the head was transplanted the head of animal was transplanted on the human being uh, if i try to justify that then that is a, a terrible wrong thing that i am doing the myth was always uh, poetic huh? there is uh, myth is poetic myth is literary uh, myth myths are metaphorical and myths are to be read not in a literal scientific way it can never be read in that scientific uh, way people can say that the the image of ganesh tries to say that he was having a very good memory he was uh, ganesh was having a very good memory elephants are having very good memory uh, and if somebody is very intellectual you want to use a metaphor metaphor of large size of brain large size of brain for intellectuality so you want to say somebody is intellectual and you use elephant then elephant can stand as a metaphor of uh, something that has a good memory who can store large memory and remember it 
and who has a largeness of the brain the size of the brain that is perhaps you want to convey uh, there but to connect it with organ transplant which is again a scientific use of language or plastic surgery will be highly problematic there so in myth the language is used for emotive purpose eh? emotive in literature it is used for emotive purpose and we can't take it scientifically eh? and scientific meaning if you find then there will always be a problem in reading uh, in reading literature and this all problems i r richards is discussing eh? when he, he gives the piece of poem to other people he says that well you are doing here scientific reading of poetry eh? here you have to do emotive reading of poetry if you will mix up with this two use of language then you are making a mistake you can't read uh, a poetry literature a myth scientifically it is not possible that it is. and you can't read science uh, science discourse with uh, with the purpose of emotiveness into that okay? so that is the second second important point that he discusses about two uses of a uh, language there third one and very interesting a bit difficult also uh, uh, that is on metaphor uh, i will give some some of the examples of metaphor uh, we want to discuss which is a little bit difficult maybe you have to concentrate a little bit more uh, into into this to see uh, how uh, how uh, this point is uh, discussed uh, let me share the document here okay now let me increase the the font size yeah okay i think now it is visible okay and la, la, metaphor uh, is a very uh, uh, is very simplified terms uh, uh, in a very simplified terms we can say is a covert comparison covert comparison a kind of we can say hidden comparison yeah. a word or phrase from one semantic field I remember the word semantic field a word or phrase from one semantic field is substituted with a word or phrase from another one huh? so for example the, uh, the the example we have seen earlier huh? srk hits home run huh? the example we have seen before the break in that we see that there is a semantic field of bollywood and then there is a semantic field of baseball and when both the things are uh, merged together even the om becomes a metaphor huh? apostrophe om apostrophe om also becomes a metaphor huh? for home or om shanti om yeah? there has to be at least one common characteristics between the two uh, parts of the metaphor to work a common ground uh, uh, that is tertium uh, comparison uh, comparison uh, uh, there is uh, uh, some error there okay no no uh, uh, particle of comparison is used uh, a terminology introduced by the critic i richards distinguishes between tenor uh, tenor that is purport purport means significance importance uh, Uh, significance or importance purport p u r p o r t of uh, or meaning of the image uh, purport or meaning of the image and vehicle the image which conveys the meaning uh, there for example uh, the word that comes here uh, uh, is that uh, bulldozer uh, for example if you see this uh, word here here comes the bulldozer uh, here comes the bulldozer so when we see this word uh, 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 actually bulldozer is not coming huh? bulldozer is not coming but some some human being is coming and then if somebody says here comes the bulldozer so what do we understand huh? we, we don't know who is coming huh? but do we get any sense of understanding and what kind of person that might be who is coming any sense do we get from this here comes the bulldozer but bulldozer is not coming actually human being is coming so what what do we see in that human being the human being uh, 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 yes uh, he is a mighty or very strong person okay mighty or very strong person so we say uh, uh, here comes a, a bulldozer huh? uh, you can say now that person is a woman if that person is a woman then will it be the same or will it change anyway yes anybody more intelligent more intelligent do you see intelligence in that bulldozer is intelligent do you see yes or okay. uh, in case of uh, 
women i think so. in in case of in case of women how uh, women so when you use women uh, bulldozer and women then it is intelligent it means see, there, there should be some sense of, of that meaning in bulldozer also when you are using that then bulldozer should have that sense uh, uh, then only you can connect that with your feeling otherwise Sir, the metaphor is not pre appropriate yeah yes yeah kishan ajay khodani kare means a human khodani kare bulldozer ek khode ane women pan koi ni khodani kare that is gossip huh? that is gossip so you see that sense in that gossip sense of gossip in bulldozer and in women so you are getting now see three meanings you are you are you are you are talking about one is that somebody who is mighty somebody who is a mighty somebody who is very strong muscular uh, that sense we see uh, 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 somebody who is uh, gossip huh? who is doing gossip huh? who talks about uh, so you say khodani is the word that you are using here yeah? and third one is you say it is intelligence huh? intelligence huh? Uh, there okay? yeah. so uh, intelligence is still uh, very difficult to connect because i don't know how bulldozers are intelligent here yeah? in what sense do you see intelligence in bulldozer that if you can throw more light then it will be good huh? to understand if there is anything there bhumika you can think of that yeah. uh, nidhi yeah. says it is uh, 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 it is strength uh, mighty muscular uh, muscular is an idea uh, that she wants to convey and uh, kishan says uh, it is doing khudai uh, khudai so khodani uh, koi nahi karve now that again is a uh, see that word ke uh, gujarati ma e vapare ke koi vyakti koi ni khodani kare che e pan rupak che e it is not uh, the uh, uh, it is not uh, we can say scientific use of language that actually it is not that Yeah, is just talking about somebody a khodani khodani karu talking mate a a yogya a rupak na swarup ma che but what actually the person is doing person is talking about somebody talking about somebody and gujarati ma apre ek eno emotive use karu che khodani karvi etle khali talking to sari pan thai kharab hai thai to khodani etle ek prakar ni nakaratmakta sathe karvama avti charcha etle ema ek negative connotation pan you are adding that that the work is negatively connected with that so when you compare that somewhere in your mind uh, the the idea also is that that uh, bulldozers are also doing khudai which is which is not good which is bad huh? that also is the sense connected with that huh? uh, uh, well, ha yes jignes yeah i think uh, we can say that a bulldozer means uh, a woman is coming for the change the mentality of, mentality of uh, man here is a similar similarity okay change the mentality so bulldozer changes the mentality is that the sense that bulldozer is changing the mentality uh, you can read that सपाट करने मतलब Does it change the attitude? For that, you can you use that? Okay? Read this example. Huh? Read this example here, uh, and it says that uh, primum uh, primum compare comparendum uh, is uh, Brehan Hilda. There is a context that is given here. Uh, that uh, uh, here is here is how. Uh, uh, you introduce your brother's new girlfriend uh, brenhilda when she cannot hear you when she cannot hear you એટલે પેલી સાંભળી નથી શક્તિ ત્યારે તમે કહો છો એના વિશે કંઈક બોલો છો કે હિયર કમ્સ ધ બુલડોઝર હિયર કમ્સ ધ બુલડોઝર ના ઓબવિયસલી યુ ગેટ અ સેન્સ ધેટ કે 
એક સેન્સ આપણને શું આવે છે એક ફિલિંગ કે આ પ્રકારની આવે છે કે એ સારા અર્થમાં તો ઉપયોગ નથી કર્યો બિકોઝ બિફોર બિફોર કારણ કે જો સારી વાત હોય તો ભલે સાંભળે વાંધો નથી સાંભળે તો એ વાંધો નહીં એ રીતે યુ કેન યુઝ દેટ વર્ડ બટ યર ઇટ ઇઝ દેટ સેન્સ સો યુ આર યુઝિંગ દેટ વર્ડ ઇન દેટ સેન્સ યર ઇવન ધો ઓનલી વન એલિમેન્ટ ઇઝ એક્સપ્લિસિટલી મેન્શન ધ બુલડોઝર દેર આર ઓલ્સો થ્રી એલિમેન્ટ ટુ ધીસ મેટાફોર ગ્રાફિકલી the relation between the three elements could be expressed thus primum secundum and tertium uh, primary first secondary second and tertium that is third uh, comparendum uh, so one is primary is brunhilda uh, second is bulldozer they are compared and then third one uh, we try to say that uh, it means it is large large built uh, huge in size or flattens everything around her uh, huge in size and this and this uh, this if you see here uh, this paragraph i richards uh, uh, in i richards terms the vehicle of this metaphor is the bulldozer the vehicle of this uh, metaphor is uh, uh, the bulldozer the tenor the purport of the image in this case would be brunhilda is ungraceful merciless tactless has no sense of feeling or something along those lines in that way that word is used for brunhilda who is seems to be ungraceful merciless tactless has no sense of feeling something along those lines the, the metaphor is used here okay so what is important here is that how do you see that metaphor what what meaning you are seeing in that metaphor that is very important to understand the lines of poetry Uh, so uh, and this will be very challenging also uh, it will be very challenging yeah. a word separate outside the context bulldozer may mean variety of things might uh, a strength powerful bully uh, bully uh, uh, as the comments are mentioned here khushbu uh, bully anjali says powerful uh, uh, or or uh, or something that flattens uh, the thing something that is the mind ch- changing of mind and other things also so you find lot many uh, uh, uh meanings attached with the vehicle uh, bulldozer as a vehicle uh which becomes a vehicle as a metaphor in something where you refer to human being and then it becomes very challenging to see which meaning you will put there and for that you have to see the larger context now right now we don't know who is this uh, brunhilda who is that we don't know what is the relation who or who is the speaker why the speaker is speaking in this way that also we don't know and so the sense is not getting clear eh? that the sense are not getting clear we have to see larger context kadach e sahitya ne thodu vadhare vachu pade kadach eno context vadhu clear karvo pade pachi kadach e samjhay but we have to study the meaning within itself only we are not supposed to go outside outside the text when we do verbal study but even in this small example we are seeing that there are lots of challenges eh? there are lots of challenges to see how to open the metaphor or language of poetry eh? and and this is what we are going to see in in coming two three lectures uh, our pieces of poems will be given to you uh, and we will ask you that what do you read the very important thing we want to discuss that what is the difficulty that we find in reading the poem uh, how where is difficulty uh, why are we confused uh, what are other ways of reading the same poem uh, and why that reading is not a correct reading if i read the poem in a different way why somebody will say that no not that you have to read it in this way why why should i read it in that way not in the another way is that anything in the poem is that the language of the poetry saying that no you should read it in this way not the another way uh, uh, that is that is our our quest or that is our concern to see in, in poetry there okay let us see uh, one more example here uh, in the in the same uh, uh, write up here is one more example in most cases one identifies the common ground without thinking about it it is however useful to be aware of the exact steps for the decoding process especially when when one wishes to explore the effects of an image in some detail effect of the image or symbol in some detail take the following statement made by richard richard of gloucester uh in his opening speech in shakespeare's play uh, richard the 3rd in the late medieval war uh, now referred to as the war of the roses richard's noble family the house of york 
have just defeated the house of lancaster and richard's elder brother edward is now king now remember the context the context is coming from the play richard the 3rd uh, and then there was a war of roses richard's noble family that is the royal family that is known as house of york uh, have just defeated the house of lancaster and richard's elder brother edward is now king and then there is this sentence now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of york yes now uh, the uh, winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of uh, york uh, this lines are coming now how do we do the analysis of this uh, poem uh, we see that uh, uh, there are this uh, uh, metaphorical uh, use of seasons here seasons winter summer and also sun uh, sun also is a metaphor coming from nature uh, winter season uh, sun uh, uh, this so the tenor the tenor of this metaphor there are three metaphors actually here winter summer and sun is something like this we can see this now the time of our unhappiness uh, uh, that is winter of our discontent so time of unhappiness is past uh, is past it has been replaced by a time of well being owing to the new king new king who is of the york family so now it is summer glorious summer it is converted winter is converted into glorious summer by the sun by the sun of york and so you can say that the king coming from york family has converted our unhappiness into happiness that is what it tries to say as vehicles operate the words winter summer sun a common association with winter is darkness now see how the analysis is done yeah? which is what we will expect from you also that how are you going to analyze a poem how are you going to analyze a poem look here how the analysis is done of this particular line uh winter is darkness dreariness even death and these aspects offer themselves as likely common ground for time of discontent a time of unhappiness summer is easily associated with warmth bloom grow something is growing and is happiness a comparison between sun and king is fairly common sun and king s u n sun and king is fairly common and the additional homonymic pun homonymic pun that is s u n s o n sun sun yeah homonymic pun on sun or sun makes this point quite clear since the present ed king edward is of the york family that is son of york also two things are worthy of remark at this point first the paraphrase is rather an impoverished rendering of the original expression and does not seem to exhaust the full potential of the image it seems however more expressive to say made glorious summer than to say made a pleasant time critics are thus of the opinion that an image uh, always expresses something beyond its paraphrase so when you try to paraphrase a poem the actual poem always goes beyond the paraphrase the second point to be made is that shakespeare uses three metaphors here it is winter summer and sun and all three taken from the same semantic field that is the seasons it also happens however that semantic fields are mixed incongruously also uh, this and before we go into the second example so are you able to see this that how this lines can be analyzed or can be seen uh, and how this metaphors are seen they are connected the semantic fields are seen and what do they stand for so winter standing for unhappiness summer standing for happiness sun is connected with the king or sun with the son of the royal family those metaphorical reading is necessary now if you are not able to see winter uh, in that context that is unhappiness because in our context in indian context uh, uh, sometimes we may find that uh, winter for us is not uh, unhappy time winter is the best time uh, what is terrible time is summer uh, for us now the scorching heat of summer is getting terrible uh, and so now to go out in this summer 
we we can never have easiness summers are never coming with easiness so these are the summers of the western world right? summers of the western world winters of the western world actually our winters are great here right? we enjoy life uh, more in winter than in summer so that that cultural disconnect uh, or geographical dislocation also is important to be seen uh, that when we see uh, a particular literature it is re uh, rooted in geographical locations also if you are in a tropical country like india the geographical locations are different if you are in the northern hemisphere then the geographical locations are different uh, 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 the winters are different the summers are different eh? and then symbolically they will speak in a different way eh? Eh, eh, also eh? okay one more example this was then there was metaphors coming from cement, same semantic field it may also happen that the metaphors may come from a different semantic field and then it may be a little bit difficult also huh? then it can become a bit difficult also when it comes from a different semantic uh, field yeah? for example here we see uh, incongruously mixed from various semantic field uh, see the sentence here uh, uh, a burning sense a burning sense of injury flooded through her and was not to be rooted out the burning sense of injury flooded through her and was not to be rooted out i repeat again the burning sense of injury flooded through her and was not to be rooted out now if you try to see what is the meaning of this if you try to read the meaning then yes anybody can tell me what is the meaning kya prakar ne feeling hase ke koi au bole eu su thai ke koi vyakti au bole kya prakar ne feeling व्यक्त करने शब्दों ने सेंस रूपे वाँची सकते सेंस फीलिंग पी टॉन इंटेन्शन आए क्या प्रकार की फीलिंग हो तो आ शब्द बोल, बोलता हो कोई एनी बड़ी यस एनी बड़ी कैन सेंस के क्या फीलिंग हो आ शब्द व्यक्त थाय in this uh, burning uh, indicates that uh, she is um, like um, uh, she is hurt or um, some kind of um, uh, some uh, she is hurt badly and the injury indicates that uh, she is hurt and uh, burning means some kind of fire means some terrible feeling like anger or um, jealousy or any such feelings are there and injury all indicate that she is uh, a girl might be hurt okay uh, uh... okay fine uh, there is uh, some kind of hurt and so the injury is there and this is that burning sense of injury uh, flooded through uh, flooded through and it is not to be rooted out uh, now can you imagine what kind of hurt might be there what kind of hurt like for example if two options i give will it be physical or psychological or it can be both also psychological okay so you are reading psychological damage psychological damage or psychological injury uh what 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 are those things which makes psychological damage or psychological injury anybody else uh, can you say ha ah, yes uh, it could be jealousy or um anger or uh, anything uh, disappointed something uh, unexpected happens okay yeah something unexpected happens some kind of break out from relations huh? some kind of break out from relations uh, uh, or some expectations not fulfilled then we have psychological injury yeah? physical injury like right? you are you are paddling a cycle and you fell down you can have a physical injury also you meet with an accident uh, or you you hit something some object and then you can have and then also you can have burning sense of injury flooded through and was not to be rooted out it can be used for both in an absence of context we can say that this injury can be physical also as well as psychological also it can be both internal or outside body or mind anything can be uh, uh, done uh, there okay but again uh, what we want to see here uh, let me share the screen
okay so uh, the the next thing that we see here okay in this example three semantic fields are mixed three semantic fields are mixed which are those semantic uh, 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 fields uh, uh, fire huh? fire is one semantic field water is another semantic field and gardening is another third semantic field from fire the word burning is coming burning is connected with the semantic field of fire flooded is connected with the semantic field of water and fire and water are very opposite elements very opposite so incongruous metaphors are mixed and gardening is altogether a different thing rooted out rooted out that is mur sota ukhedi nakhu pe mur sotu ukhedi nakhu rooted out gardening in effect mixed metaphors are rather confusing because they become difficult to visualize we can't visualize this image Uh, in a very clear way uh, we can have uh, a, a kind of a vague feeling but we can't actually get to the tin or through the vehicles uh, uh, burning is a vehicle flooded is the vehicle rooted out is the vehicle yes this are uh, uh, vehicle now for example if we say that no it is not a vehicle uh, it itself is tin or uh, it itself is tin or if i want to argue in this way that why do you say that it is burning is a is a metaphor it is not metaphor then you say that well uh, the person really burned huh? the person put the hand over the gas gas stove or he was playing with the fire cracker and there is a burn huh? so it is a real burning huh? you say it is a real burning huh? it is not uh, something that is uh, uh, metaphorical huh? there is a real burning sensation it is not only the feeling huh? just come here there is one parcel let me take okay so this is uh, so that is that is what i said that when i really feel burning by the fire in one or the other way like fire crackers or gas stove or or match stick or candle anything anyway and then i say that uh, there is a uh, there is a injury by burning that is scientific use of language also that actually there is a burning burning is not something that is hidden it is not psychological it is outside and it is coming from a fire then it is uh, coming from uh, uh, the semantic field of fire and burning but here we see that the person is not talking about getting getting hurt by the fire huh? the person is not talking about that that is why burning becomes metaphorical huh? burning it is just a burning sense so burning is abstract huh? burning is not concrete huh? burning sense and the burning sense is jealousy irshathavi huh? irshath hui uh, jealousy envy these are burning sense uh, burning sense uh, or even as uh, uh, as uh, gautam buddha puts in aditya uh, uh, aditya uh, sutta uh, he says that burning may be from lust also uh, burning can be from lust uh, also from passion also uh, so that is that uh, symbolic sense of burning uh, which even buddha used there and here also we see that and then a uh, sense of injury flooded through now if the word flooded i want to use then i say that there is a heavy rain and water flooded in my home uh, there is a heavy rain and water flooded in my my house so i am using scientifically the word flooded uh, i am using scientifically ke khare khar pani mara ghar ma ghusi gyu chhe pani mara ghar ma ghusi gyu flood na swarupe pani aavi ane mara ghar ma ghusyo ane khare khar ghusyo chhe pani a apan koi koi पानी नु फ्लड तरीके घर में घुसी जाऊ एक नेगेटिव सेंस यू केन सी इट इज नॉट गुड ते अपने कूव खोदता हो पानी आए तो ये सारी वस्तु पूर न पानी घर में घुसी जाए तो पानी सारू नहीं नेगेटिव सेंस फ्लड में रहे रीते घना बदा मेहमान मेरे घरे गया घना बदा मेहमान घरे गया तो आई केन से देट सो मेनी गैस फ्लडेड मै रूम फ्लडेड मै होम फ्लडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडेडे
and then rooted out root when i'm doing a gardening work and i say that there were lots of weeds and i rooted out the weeds i am actually doing that it is not metaphor but here it is not so here you want to remove something or uh, something that is that is abstract some kind of burning sensation some kind of injury inside your mind you want to root out but you think that you will not be able to remove it this is how you see this word burning flooded or rooted out can be metaphorically one thing can be scientifically something else emotively it speaks something else scientifically they speak something else also a final example here is uh, uh, lady macbeth uh, says to her husband was the hope drunk uh, you dressed yourself uh, was the hope drunk you dressed uh, yourself uh, so uh, it says that like a uh, hope is personified yeah? she personifies hope uh, hope drunk ala uh, hope to kai drinking na kare pan hope e nasho karyo hato ke ene nasho kare drunk atle nasho karo drunk is not water drinking yeah? that we know ke koi logo ke ke drinking kare che etle kai soda na pita hot they do different kind of drinking yeah? so nasho karo etle hope nasho kare ne betho hato person e hope and describes him or her as drunk not based on sober facts but then she moves to the semantic field of clothes semantic field of clothes dress yourself so you are talking about the semantic field of clothes and the personified hope is turned into the item of clothing is turned into item of clothing this is confusing because one ends up with a drunken piece of clothing drunken piece of it and the have so lage ke koi kapdu che એ દારૂ પીને બેઠું છે એ નશો કરીને બેઠું છે એવી ફિલિંગ આવે હવે આને વિઝ્યુઅલાઇઝ કેમ કરું આ મેટાફર ને વિઝ્યુઅલાઇઝ કરવું બહુ અઘરી વસ્તુ છે ડ્રંકન પીસ ઓફ ક્લોથિંગ અફકોર્સ વન કેન સ્ટીલ વર્ક આઉટ ધ ટીનોર ઓફ ધ મેટાફર વિચ વુડ બી સમથિંગ લાઈક વોઝ ધ હોપ યુ એક્સપ્રેસ્ડ જસ્ટ અ ડિલ્યુઝન ઇફ યુ વોન્ટ ટુ ઓપન દેટ ટીનોર ફ્રોમ ધીસ વ્હીકલ ઇફ યુ રિમૂવ ધ મેટાફર એન્ડ ઇફ યુ ટ્રાય ટુ પેરાફ્રેઝ ઇટ or to try to say simple then you can say eh, that yeah, you, what you mean by this is was the hope you expressed just a delusion in such cases one talks of mixed metaphor or uh, catacrisis it has uh, long been considered bad style to use mixed metaphors it has been considered wrong style in poetry to do uh, to make use of mixed metaphors the above example for macbeth for instance so shocked the editors of shakespeare that some editions changed it to was the hope drunk wherein you blessed yourself many editors changed dressed to blessed because they said that avi bull shakespeare na kare a prakare mixed metaphor ne bull shakespeare thi na thai hoy koi na lakhwa ma dress che blessed thai gi hoy sake or was the hope drunk wherein you dressed that is addressed yourself addressed yourself when you told yourself that i have i have an ambition to become a king when you address yourself that you have an ambition to become a king that is the sense of dress that is you addressed yourself so these are some of those things which people see in reading of metaphors here okay so i hope you are you are you are, you are following and getting the sense that how you are supposed to do analysis of of figurative language in poetry or when we do verbal study what are we supposed to question how are we supposed to problematize the language what this language mean and what we are supposed to read in that language that is what uh, 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 is the uh, is something very interesting of new criticism uh, that we see uh, here okay uh, okay so uh, let me again share the the blog uh, uh, through which we are uh, studying this okay so practical criticism we find four kinds of meaning Uh, and who will tell me very quickly what are these four kinds of meaning sense feeling tone and in- intention sense feeling tone and intention yes uh, your task your homework also is to see that you pick up some of the poetic lines and try to see that that here is the sense here is the feeling here is the tone and here is the intention you try to study that so the things become more clear if you will not study you will forget eh? and you will not be able to apply eh? when you want to do analysis two uses of language who will tell me what are these two uses of language 
फर्स्ट इज साइंटिफिक एंड सेकंड इज इमोशनल यस इमोटिव इमोटिव एंड इमोटिव हां इट मींस इमोशनल बट इज इमोटिव यूज एंड अ साइंटिफिक यूज ऑफ द द लैंग्वेज ओके uh not down the examples also when you say that uh, water flooded in my home and when i say guests flooded in my home when water flooded it is scientific use of the word flooded when the guest flooded it is emotive use of the uh, of the like there is some emotion connected with that there is some some intention uh, the tone is different the feeling is different a guest pratye mane atithi devo bhav no bhav nathi this a guest pratye mari feeling थिंग्सिंग and in a in a good use of poetry and good use of metaphor in poetry they normally remain to similar meta, metaphor a semantic field uh, that okay, okay. Uh, next uh, is that uh, wh- why was a uh, uh, practical criticism written uh, what was the purpose uh, of i richards he wanted to introduce a new kind of documentation to those who are interested in the contemporary state of culture whether as critics philosophers as teachers as psychologists or merely as curious persons so first thing he wanted to introduce a new kind of documentation for example what what is the way that you are reading poem today what is the way that you read charlie chaplin today that is that sense that you want to document how are you reading what what are the meanings that you are finding uh the same poems if it is given to the new students after 100 years maybe they will read something else also they will see some other meaning also they will see another references also in all those things so it is a good way of seeing that how people are are reading the poems today what kind of problems are they facing today what kind of uh, misinterpretations are done see this are very important uh, uh, again uh, normally what we we feel uh, uh, normal apre evu hoy ke ek sari rit je vachvani hoy ej badane samjha bada e rit j vachta ho ena ej abhyas karva so if i have done a wrong reading i will not document my wrong reading i will not document etle hu analysis karis to evu rite nahi lakhu ke bulldozer ni vat karta karta mane to em ke bulldozer bahu intelligent hoy chhe etle pachi khabar padi ke na intelligence na sense ma to na vapray pa hu e lakhu kharo jare mara ma sense aave ke intelligent na sense ma bulldozer na vapri sakay to e pan lakhu joye apre e pan lakhu joye jare analysis kariye tyare so when i am reading the poem It seems that poem means all the earth happens. It means I am like that poem a kehwa mage che. Pachi poem puri thai tyare akho earth badlai gyo. Pachi badu nau chitra samay ayu. Atwa jare charcha kari koi saath hai tyare biju chitra samay ayu. Tyare pelu chitra pan rehu joye apni pas. Apna analysis ma apni misunderstanding pan lakhavi joye. I repeat again. I repeat again. If you have done misinterpretation of the poem. if you have wrong uh, if you have read metaphors in a wrong way whatever way you have read you have to write it you have to write it you have to document that also and then you have to say that you can say that why i was reading that hu suka mari te vanchto hato mara man ma a vichar hato hu ane a sathe connect karto hato that all you can do analysis and then you can come down to what is supposed to be the correct reading of the poem eh? what is supposed to be the but do not miss an opportunity to document to write in your analysis somewhere when you are doing wrong analysis or when you think that you are going in a different direction do not forget to to make a note of those things when you do analysis and this is what we want to see when you are doing the analysis of the practical poems which we will share with everybody okay okay let me come back again to the blog here so to introduce this then to provide a new technique for those who wish to discover for themselves what they think and feel about poetry or cognate matters and why they should uh, like or dislike it so new technique of reading and which is very interesting people uh, uh, many people that is those who are not dealing with literature 
they they may they may never like poetry because poetry is difficult poetry is poetry is challenging yeah? very challenging use of language comes in poetry uh and we have to do lots of mental activity with poetry yeah? lots of mental activity we have to do uh, when we we study uh, uh, poem uh, we have to do uh, uh, lots of thinking when we study poem well now perhaps you may say that what is this mental activity what is this thinking literature is all about emotions you have to feel poetry people say you have to feel poetry and here you are telling that you have to think about poetry you have to do mental activity about poetry well you will say well i don't like it that's why if you are in mushaira and some poet is reciting uh, uh, the recitation of the poems are beautiful and you enjoy ke wow wow irshad irshad fir se once again once more uh, we enjoy we just feel the poem but when we study the poem when we study the poem we we do lots of mental activity eh? and and then it becomes challenging eh? very tough very tough task also uh, it, it becomes and so we have to come out from that idea that well poetry is to be felt it is fine but when you study you have to think about poem you are actually thinking about the language of poetry eh? you are deeply trying to understand the language and then you you are mesmerized or flabbergasted or surprised to see that oh language can mean so many things eh? भाषा के भी अद्भुत वस्तु जात जात अर्थो भाषा में रहे एक आश्चर्य खुले डॉनिंग ऑफ देट देट अंडरस्टेडिंग देट हाउ लैंग्वेज केन मीन सो मेनी थिंग्स एंड अवर अंडरस्टेडिंग ऑफ लैंग्वेज ऑल्सो गेट्स राइपन वेन वी डू देट एक्टिविटी सो देट इज द अनदर थिंग देट आई रिचर्स वोटेड टू डू एंड थर्ड वन टू प्रिपेर द वे ऑफ एज्युकेशनल मेथड्स more efficient than those we use now in developing discrimination and the power to understand what we hear or we read so uh, a new way of educational methods uh, which becomes important and necessary also that this way if we study language we become very clear in our mind that language can be can be read in the most wrong manner and can also be seen into the best possible better manner of reading but language uh, uh, can never be read in a similar way in all the ages varta bhasha kare darek darek yug ma ek j rite vachati nahi hoti e badlati jay chhe emna metaphorical sense na adhare bhasha bahut judi judi rite loko vachta hoy chhe and that becomes very interesting to see that when we come to language Uh, we have to very carefully see what does this language mean actually today to me eh? how i have to i am supposed to decipher or open the the language eh, here okay? uh, one of the challenges that i richards faced uh, in in, in uh, doing this was this that uh, when people are doing over literal reading of the poem over literal eh, or, or or scientific reading of the poem it was very difficult to convince them that there are metaphors in poetry there is figurative use of language in poetry and there is personification in poetry eh? and because of all these things what happens in poetry can happen in poetry eh? what happens in poetry can happen in poetry that is what you can uh, uh, say uh, so milk can smile in poetry eh? milk can smile in poetry the cloud can draw painting in poetry eh? the cloud without hands Uh, where if the cloud cannot hold the pencil can still uh, do penciling work this all is possible in in poetry which is not possible in real world uh, that is very difficult to explain them today when we read after 100 years of this uh, today when we read we have a different challenge that today there is this overuse of metaphorical and rhetorical language in such a way that we have to tell people that the language is not supposed to be seen in this way uh, language metaphors are not real things uh, if somebody has said that cloud uh, sorry the milk can smile uh, uh, milk can never smile is a reality ek ek kavya hazar 2000 varsh pehla lakhayu hoy to em na kai sakay ke 2000 varsh pehla milk smile karta hata e samay ma apre atyar aavi gaya che atyar apre e samjhavu pade ke aa metaphors che a real nahi koi em na kai sake na khare khare ek samay e cloud pase hath hata hath ma pencil lai ne drawing karta hata आज लोग ए रीते भाषा ने जो मिले नवी रीते आज भाषा ने अपने खोली ने लोग ने समझा पड़े चैलेंजीस ऑफ डिफरंट काइंड ऑफ चैलेंजीस देट वी सी हियर हिज एप्रोच हिज एप्रोच इज प्रेग्मेटिक एंड एम्पेरिकल प्रेग्मेटिक मीन्स वेरी प्रेक्टिकल एप्रोच एम्पेरिकल एम्पेरिकल मीन्स 
something that is what you see and experience eh? what you see what you experience and you learn from that that is empirical you conclude from your experience that is empirical uh, uh, thing uh, that is very practical very pragmatic uh, uh, also his experiment was comments of students on poems without title and author he gave suggestions uh, suggestions comments interpretations and con and conclusion that so his practical approach gave a new path to literary criticism uh, that uh, instead of intuitive and impressionistic criticism it became more factual and scientific uh, this became more factual and scientific instead of intuitive and impressionistic criticism uh, in his methodology a lot of importance is given to the words uh, because it is verbal study uh, here okay? he believed that poet uh, writes to communicate uh, and language is the means of that communication language is made of words and hence a study of words is all important if we are to understand the meaning of a work of art words carry four kinds of meaning which he said uh, earlier okay? we have seen that sense feeling tone intention to him language of poetry is purely emotive uh, in, in its original primitive state this language affects feelings hence we must avoid intuitive and over literal over literal reading of poems words in poetry have an emotive value and the figurative language used by poets conveys those emotions effectively and forcefully the importance of context and uh, rhythm and meter uh, uh, speaks about that the sound of the words invokes feeling rhythm meter meaning cannot be separated they form together a single system we'll come to the the idea about rhythm uh, later on when we discuss uh, uh, this uh, there okay? okay fine so uh, uh, figurative language when we come down to our essay which is in our syllabus uh, after this background for the practical criticism uh, we see uh, this aspect there uh, i would request you to go through this uh, references for tomorrow's discussion uh, for tomorrow's discussion go through that points and some of the poems uh, i will give you tomorrow uh, in the classroom to read uh, and 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 we will try to see uh, what way are we able to read the, those poems and are we uh, able to reach to the original sense and the feeling uh, or we are doing misinterpretations while we do that that will be the practical experiment we'll try to do a few more poems in gujarati hindi language and also in english language of the lyrics also will be shared and we will try to see that how metaphor similes symbols emotive scientific uh, 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 this sense a uh, 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 feeling tone intentions operate uh, and uh, how we may still make either a wrong reading of a poem or we may fail to uh, uh, understand uh, the language of poetry all this activity will do in subsequent uh, days uh, also uh, any question right now here anybody any question any observation anybody okay then we end our our session here and tomorrow uh, we will continue with the figurative language okay?